everywhere you look. Driving around in a car, it does give me time to think. And when you're in a traffic jam, as I am at the minute, it gives you even more time to think. And I was just, just so you know, I'd been into the Apple store. And I know, I know, Dave Dawn's an Apple fanboy, yes, I get that, fine. I wasn't. I am now. And there's a good reason why I am. Cutting a long story short, my iMac was poorly. And it's the iMac that I've used for quite a while to put the shows out on. The hard disk died. Now I've had it since 2011, so it's over three year old took it back in to the Apple store, they did their quick check just to confirm that what I'd said was the case was the case. And the upshot of it is, it's being rectified for free and for nothing. This is three years down the road. And the Apple store's putting it right, for free and for nothing. There was obviously something wrong, wasn't my fault, so it's getting done. So I'm an Apple fanboy. And it led me to thinking about people that are fanboys, if you like, for certain of the branded e-cigs. Some people, for instance, are Joytech fanboys, some are Kanga fanboys, and so on and so on and so forth. And there's no reason why they shouldn't be. If any of these outfits produces something that you really like, I don't have a problem with people buying into a particular brand, but I tell you what I do have a bit of a challenge with. And that's all this OEMing. Now I'm not going to name any names, but there's one particular e that was brought to my, well, battery that was brought to my attention a little while back. And somebody said, oh, Google this particular name, Tesla Spider, and you'll find it. And I did. That's its original name, the Tesla Spider. Can't remember who makes it. But I've seen it OEM'd and branded other things by vendors. Going back in the day when I first got started, I well remember watching... Um, a sequence of four reviews from I think he was called Rusty Nuts Scottish lad he's not active anymore in, in YouTube reviews where he looked at a 901 um, and the device was identical from four different vendors but each different vendor had called it a different name and had their own branding on it so it was exactly the same they were all Silobore 901s bearing in mind that at this time the only people that made a 901 was Silobore it very quickly got cloned but these were all exactly the same unit in exactly the same box just called different things it was the same with the 401 it was the same with the 510 all exactly the same unit, but all called different things. And I think that kind of thing just serves to confuse people. One of the reasons I use Apple equipment as much as I do, and one of the reasons that I'll continue to use Apple equipment is because it's made by Apple. And I can spot a clone a million miles away. And if it ain't, the real I am, I'm probably not going to use it. And yeah, yeah, I know there'll be people saying, well, you're stupid because they cost the bomb. Yeah, you'll notice we don't get that many issues in terms of being able to broadcast. And what issues we do get are usually down 
to the carriers that we use rather than the machinery that we use. And it's kind of a, it, it's a funny thing, isn't it? And it probably will bring me on to the next piece that I do, which is going to be about clones. So let's leave that one there. Let's kind of say, look, I'm not keen on the same thing being called a million names in different places. I would really rather, if you are selling a Joytech Ego, for God's sake, call it a Joytech Ego and not a e sigs R us ego or a rocket or a i don't know what you want to call it lipstick or anything like that if it's a brand call it a brand this oem thing just serves to confuse and it doesn't help when it comes to cloning but that is a subject for the next time thank you very much <laughs>